So I don't know if you've been in construction two days, two years, or two decades, but if you're on the front end of your career, you're probably encountering some difficulty in estimating quantities. Lumber, concrete, I'm gonna drill down on those two things and give you uh, five or six hacks, shortcuts, math hacks, so that your estimating can tighten up and maybe almost as important, get quicker and that you can have confidence in a quicker calculation because math is power. And if you can learn to manipulate math accurately and quickly, you're going to have more power in your life and on the job site. So let me drill down on a shortcut for estimating concrete volume in slabs. You know how thick the slab is, you know how big the slab is, or maybe you know how much slab you've got left when the last truck just ran out. A four inch slab gets 80 square feet out of one yard of concrete. One yard of concrete, 80 square feet on the ground. That's fast. If it's a six inch slab, it gets 50 square feet on the ground out of a yard of concrete. Can you see the advantage of being able to just know that, have that memorized so that you're not, you know, over by the truck, crunching some numbers on your calculator while the crew is waiting and the batch plant is waiting. No, nope. 80 square feet per yard on four inch, 50 square feet per yard on six inch. Now let's talk about estimating framing material. You look at a set of blueprints and man, there's a lot of marks on there. And you know that the 16 inch set are on the studs, but do I have to count every stud? No. You don't have to count every trimmer in the doorways. You don't have to count every bottom cripple and top cripple and add up all of them at 30 inches and all of, no, no. The lineal feet of wall, linear feet of wall times 1.2 will get you very close to the number of studs you need. And then you cut up your studs for your cripples, you cut your trimmers out of your studs, pre-cut studs are a little more money, but they're a lot handier. So just the lineal feet of wall times 1.2 is gonna give you a real, good, a real good idea of how many studs the job's gonna take. Now the second part of this is very similar to that, and it is how many pieces of plate stock do I need? The plates are the bottom plate at the bottom of the wall, the top plate that the studs nail to at the top and the crown plate, which goes over the top plate and laps the joints and butts to the uh, intersecting walls, the crown plate, the top plate, the bottom plate, that's three plates, right? Well, that's not how many plates you order because you have a lot of other uses for long boards. So you multiply the lineal feet of wall times five. And since I like to use 16 foot boards for the plate stock, it's lineal feet of wall times five Divided by 16 is the number of two by four or two by six by 16 feet that I order for plates. What that provides is the material that I need for the temporary bracing. It provides the material for the catwalks and the braces and the rafters and the sheetrock backing at the ceiling level. It's just a good hip shot estimation because sometimes a hip shot is all you've got time for and sometimes a hip shot is all you need. Let's talk about calculating the roof sheeting plywood, four by eight sheets, going onto the trusses or the rafters, which are sloped. Maybe they're a 412 pitch, maybe they're a five or a six or an eight or a 10 or a 1212 pitch. Well, you probably know that the steeper that roof gets, the greater the amount of roof sheeting is on the pitch compared to if it were just flat, like it is when you're looking at the plans. That rake, that distance on the slope is the hypotenuse of a triangle. Now we're gonna talk about using the hypotenuse to calculate layout, but you can either do the a squared plus b squared equals c squared thing, or you can scale it off your drawings, or you can take your framing square and your tape measure, and if it's a, an 812 pitch, 812 on the plan specified, you can just simply measure from the eight to the 12, and you'll find out that an 812 pitch it takes about 14 and a half inches of roof sheeting to cover one foot of horizontal distance. And you can do that on any of them. 12, 12, 4, 12. Now at 4, 12, the, dis the difference is not much. 4, 12 pitch takes 12 and 3 quarter inches on the pitch compared to the horizontal distance. But a 12, 12 is a big difference. It takes 17 inches. So is that obvious? Yeah, maybe but maybe not. So keep in mind with it, this as in every other bit of estimation that there's gonna be some waste. 
you don't just figure the square footage on the pitch, add for the two foot overhangs, count up the sheets and hit go. You think, well, for every hip and every valley and every, every bit of choppiness on this roof, every time one gable steps into another and you have to cut sheets to length, you're gonna have waste. 10 to 15% is very standard once again, so don't forget to put it on. So the next math application, hip shot, except this is not a hip shot. This is a sniper shot. This is focused right down to the perfect intersection of the crosshairs and hitting exactly the mark you want quickly. And it uses A squared plus B squared equals C squared, which describes the relationship between the sides of any right triangle, right angle, 90 degrees, hypotenuse, okay? Long distance between two points on these two lines, that's the hypotenuse. And what good old Pythagoras taught us is that if, for instance, this side we call A, and this side we call B, and this side we call C, then this side squared, which means this side times itself, if this was three, three times three equals nine. If this side, which we'll call B, is squared, and this side is four, then four times four is 16, okay? And this side is what we're trying to determine. Well, three times three being nine, plus four times four being 16 equals 25. And the square root of 25, that is the number which multiplied by itself equals 25, is five. So any triangle with sides of three, four, and five is going to give you a 90 degree corner. All right, now, there's an infinite number of um, triangles in terms of the lengths of their sides. It's not always three and four and five, is it? It can be anything. It could be 27 feet, three and five sixteenths by 195 feet, two and a quarter. But the relationship is the same. And so the distance of A, whatever it was I said, 27 feet, and the distance squared, plus the distance of B, whatever I said, 195 feet, two and a quarter, combined, this squared plus this squared is going to give you a whopping big number, and if you hit square root on your calculator, it's gonna give you this exact length. We did a video on that. Bottom line is, you can measure that exact length, mark it on your string, and get your string line set right the first time. Practice it. Check out that video. I did it on Amanda's garage. I do it every time I lay anything out. You can even do it when you're snapping out a big template, a full-size drawing of a rake wall or something on your deck when you're framing a floor. A squared plus B squared equals C squared manipulated at speed is a wonderful laser-focused kill shot. This last item is another teaser because I'm not going into depth on cutting hip or valley rafters right here because I already did it in a video in the Spec House series. By the way, I put a mistake in there that I had to clean up with another video, and I appreciate the guys that called me out on it in the comments. But just memorize this, will you? You know, we talked about roof pitch, you know, 412, 812, 612, 512, you name it, 12. That's the pitch that you mark on common rafters. You can learn about this anywhere. Memorize that the hip or valley rafter that is accompanying that particular roof you're working on, when you're getting to the hip or the valley and it freaks you out because you don't know how to cut it and you make a bunch of cuts and it doesn't fit, it's because the hip or valley cut is always the pitch over 17 and not over 12. If the common pitch is 612, then the valley or rafter cuts are going to be 617. That's derived with the secant function in trigonometry, as I remember. I did that once on a bet. I probably couldn't do it today on a bet. Maybe I could. But if you just put that in your hip pocket, yep, over 17, got it. You're one jump ahead when somebody is trying to figure out a problem that they're not qualified to figure out. Don't let that be you. Get comfortable with math. It'll get you a raise. And when you become a contractor, it might, might keep you profitable. Now here's, here's one bonus for you that I don't know if you even need this as a bonus. I mentioned it once or twice relative to roof sheeting, I think, but 
it almost doesn't matter what you're doing. You have to provide something for waste because in almost every case, waste happens. And if you've got 10 to 15% of extra material there, and you've got a good relationship with your material supplier, and you keep the material clean, you can always send it back for credit, but not the concrete. Don't count on that with the concrete. They may take it back, and they may sell it to the next guy, but you're not getting credit for it. Thanks for watching Essential Craftsman, and keep up the good work.